Uh, let me go one, two, three. So in the back. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I was interested in knowing that with IPF, what we need to do is to get the word out, and people need to be aware of the fact that this disease will take possibly 40,000 people, 40, people every year, yet we have no money for research in IPF. Well, that's not quite true. Um, all we have a lot of research. We do now, but I, and I don't mean to get into a debate with you, but back in 2007, there was nothing available for treatment other than a lung transplant. And my husband was, he had already lost 30% of his lung capacity by the time he was diagnosed. Now, he had been going every year to his primary physician and being a complete physical. He'd been in the military, so that was something he was used to doing. Yeah. But by the time he got to a pulmonologist, he had already lost 30% of and, the capacity. Now, how I'm, I'm not saying this is, um, that that's not important, but I'm going to tell you, most people who get to the pulmonologist, it's more like 50%. Well, see, that's the thing about it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, raising we need to get awareness to these internists and these other people, the yeah. primary care mm -hmm. physician, so they will recognize what happens to a lung. Yeah. I would, I, I, so you I'm guys only, have a big job, you know, I'm following only their own collegiality. <laughs> 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 On the uh, uh, ask about the cough control and shortness of breath, are there those things, how things that you would try or just go to your cough? Uh, there are so many things on the shelf for cough, cough suppressants. Most of them are not strong enough to help. But lots of, lots of patients that I've seen with pulmonary fibrosis over the years say, you know, I found something. Great. I'm glad you did. Um, so, um, well, yeah. <laughs> and, and some some of the things that people find that are, that are helpful besides things that are over the counter are simple things like paying attention to the amount of humidity in the air. And when dry air is on, often permits cough more than moist air does, keeping a nice warm uh, temperature often helps so that the cough isn't so troublesome. Um, sudden blasts of cold air, especially cold and dry air, are not a great initiator of cough. Right? So there's some simple things that many people find useful. Um, a humidifier, a feed it clean, that's a good thing. And if you can find something over the counter, hooray. Right. Uh, in the uh, possible causes of IPM, the amyl I did not put drugs down uh, on the list of things that cause pulmonary fibrosis. The amiodarone, the drug that helps control heart rhythms, is one that has been associated with that infrequently, but definitely seems to be an association. What's that? That drug, could you repeat that drug? The drug you just mentioned. Amiodarone. Amiodarone? What's the amiodarone? Amiodarone is its also known as How would you find out where the drug trials are? You mentioned joining drug trials. So where, where would you find where the drug trials are being? Peter, you got an answer? Clinicaltrials.gov. <laughs> Clinicaltrials.gov. <laughs> Clinicaltrials.gov. Um, and I, I'm, I, I've already told him, I'm, I'm very impressed with that site. I really think there's wonderful information there. And so I think all of you, most of you have a card that got placed in front of you uh, today. I highly recommend if you've got pulmonary fibrosis, you ought to go look at that site. You can read through the whole thing of you know, probably, what, 30 minutes? No, no, no. Nah, no. <laughs> 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 
Oh, he's particularly long winded. <laughs> Yes. I'm confused about the relationship between uh, pneumonitis and fibrosis, or are they the same? Uh, terminology is a wonderful way to get everybody confused. Pneumonitis just means inflammation of the lung. Itis is inflammation. So that that's an umbrella term that could take anything, um, could cover things like pneumonia, asthma, pulmonary fibrosis. All of those things could be lumped under pneumonitis. But a lot of old time physicians like that term for fibrotic lung disease. So any of these pulmonary fibrosis things I've had up here have sometimes been called pneumonitis. But I, you know, I try and avoid that term and try and be more specific about it. So, you can get confused there. I thought you said with <clears throat> pneumonitis, rarely do you die. Pneumonitis rarely? Rarely die from it. In other words, that's what I thought you said. Um, or, I don't know in the context. I can't address that. I should not have used the term pneumonitis. I should have tried on the board. <laughs> Here. Uh, we briefly discussed stem cells earlier, so maybe there's questions about that that nobody wants to ask. But. Uh, stem cells are the hope uh, for many people that we would identify something that would be able to um, halt this disease, turn around the metabolism that's leading to the fibrosis, do something to improve lung function, replace scar tissue with tissue that's more elastic like it should be. And since stem cells are thought to be something that we could inject into the bloodstream and have them end up in the lung if they were metabolically active in some way, would it be possible to have some of these salutary benefits? 